We saw the Fellini film last Tuesday. It is not one of his best. It lacks a cohesive structure. You know, you get the feeling that he's not absolutely sure what it is he wants to say. Of course, that he wants to raise everyone's taxes, not just the rich. The question was to pay for this socialist state. You got to raise everyone's taxes. And Bernie said, yep, that's right. Your taxes are going up. That is a rare filmmaker. Granted, La Strada was a great film. Great in its use of negative imagery more than anything else. But that central cohesive core, well, you know, that must lead to through an artist's work, leading from one to the screaming other. Screaming his opinions you, you in my ear. You understand what I'm talking about? Like all that Juliet of the Spirits or Satyricon. I found it incredibly indulgent. You know, he really is. He's one of the most indulgent mm -hmm. filmmakers. He really is. Keyword here and is without, indulgent. Without yeah, either. Because the Democratic Party today, the difference is Bernie admits his policies are socialist. Now, he lionized, hold, hold on, I didn't interrupt you, Bernie. He lionized socialized medicine in Europe. If you look at socialized medicine, there are what I would give for a large, large sock as with horse manure in it. He lionized socialized medicine in Europe. If you look at socialized medicine, there are waiting periods, there's rationing. The government says if you're an elderly person, you need a hip replacement. It says, well, you may not get a hip replacement. What do you do when you get stuck on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Wait a minute, why can't it's I give my maddening. opinion? It's a free country. He, he, he can give you, do you yeah. have to give it so loud? I mean, aren't you ashamed to pontificate like that? And, and the funny part of it is, Marshall McLuhan, you don't know anything about Marshall McLuhan's oh, really? work. really, really. I happen to teach a class at Columbia called TV, Media, and Culture. So I think that my insights into Mr. McLuhan will have a great deal of validity. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, that's funny because I happen to have Mr. McLuhan right here. So, so yeah, just let me... The average wait time in 2014 for cataract surgery you leave that was up there? 83 days. Come on back. Come on and back. the average time Sorry. in Denmark, which he brought up, for hip replacement was 55 days, 59 days for knee replacement. There is a reason why, Bernie, I didn't interrupt you. I'm just not relax. interrupting just you. Relax. Come on, come on. Right. Yeah, just let me, let me, let me, let me, come over here a second. Oh, tell I, heard, I heard what you were saying. How bad is the, and I don't know the answer, you tell me. Is the Danish healthcare system also terrible? No, I mean, I think the general characterization of, of sort of waiting lists across the board is vastly incorrect. And I'll give you the example of my mother, who is hospitalized with cancer. Uh, she was treated, you know, in a matter of one or two days, uh, and this is true on a, on a number of issues. So, so the demonization of healthcare systems in Europe is, is just is just not true. Well, you understand? How much do you pay? Would the people in Denmark pay for healthcare when they go to the doctor? There is an approximately, if I'm not, it's about ten dollar copay for everyone. Ten dollars. So how much do you pay when you go to the hospital? If you have cancer, God forbid, and you went to the hospital, how much would it cost you? Zero. Oh. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this.